My name is Mark Ringer. As you know, welcome to the Forever Inc. Um, Hearts, Minds and Skin Brand Square. Um, and thank you very much for your time. I know we're all pretty busy. It's hard to find time. And uh, hopefully this will be, you know, as punchy as it needs to be, short and sweet, uh, but with some good information for you. Now, first, I have a confession to make. I haven't got a makeup artist here. It's the end of the day in London, so if I'm looking a bit bedraggled, please forgive me. Um, uh, I, I would do something about it if I was going to be on national television or something, but unfortunately, we don't have the resources here for makeup artists for Brand Square videos. Um, as I said, thank you for joining me. Um, I will. I, I will actually just take you through now the case study. So. Um, as we said, Forever Inc, it's all about tattoo care and it's a completely new product. Um, this is a global phenomenon, tattoo culture, and it has never been bigger or more interesting. And uh, this comes down to the fact that somehow in the last generation or so, tattoos went from being something for, I don't know, sailors and prostitutes, but <laughs> now for something that is actually very, very mainstream. And I think there's been a an explosion in the ways um, that tattoos, um, uh, in the imagery that are based on tattoos and the ways in which people want to use them to express themselves. Of course, the other side of tattoos is that it's either an intensely private thing or it's quite a public thing. But one thing is for sure, people want to talk about it and that makes it, makes it very, very interesting. So even if it's something that's intensely private, uh, they will talk about it just as much as if it's something that they really want to show and share. So it's never been more interesting um, and also, it's it's never been it, it's never been cooler. You know, I mean, the truth is that tattoos have never been cooler. Um, but the problem has been uh, that caring for tattoos isn't really very cool at all. Um, and the truth is that if you went to a tattoo artist and had a fabulous Rihanna style tattoo done, you fancy being Rihanna or you fancy being David Beckham or someone like that, and you're getting these magnificent tattoos done, uh, you would then say, and everyone said the same thing to the tattoo artist, what do I do now when I go home? And the tattoo artist would say, this will happen, that will happen, that will happen, and what you should put on it is nappy cream, or less diaper diaper cream, pardon me, uh, that, sort of, that sort of treatment, which is extremely uncool if you are trying to look like David Beckham or someone else, or you're a hell's angel or something like that. So it's, it's a real problem. And this is where Forest Labs uh, came to the rescue. So they decided to formulate a product and they came to us at um, uh, Anthem here in London and they said, we have this product and they basically brought a blank tube to us and said we would like you to take you know to take care of this for us we'd like you to actually go ahead and name it and create the idea so blank tube uh, two blank tubes as you'll see in a moment for the reasons uh, for the reasons that they're product variants but it's specially formulated tattoo care so this is designed to be used immediately after you have the tattoo and and indeed to provide ongoing care so that it keeps colors rich and bright so Packaging and naming for the product was, was part of the brief at phase one. And um, we came up with Forever Inc. As you're very familiar with, hence accepting the title of this presentation today, Forever Inc. And those wings that you see there that are, that, that are, that are reaching up skyward, they were designed by Lou Malloy. Now, Lou Malloy in the UK is a bit of a celebrity tattoo artist because he did David Beckham's tattoos. Um, and they are based, these are actually loosely based on, on Beckham's wings, um, and we called it Forever Inc., you know, obviously forever meaning forever with tattoos. Um, and we then set about creating packaging for them. And on the next uh, slide here, you can see the two products. There's Balm, which is immediate care for tattoos after the moment of having the tattoo, and then Shield, which is the ongoing uh, ongoing care. So, so again, this actually has a sunscreen component in there uh, so that it can really care for them. So uh, it also has Manuka honey in it, by the way, which is rather nice. Um, and this is the packaging we designed. So you can see very, very clear, not specifically and deliberately not uh, overly fashionable. 
the, you have to have the sense of um, it be that it works. Um, efficacious design. It had to look slightly pharmaceutical, uh, so that it's a product that you can believe in and a product of substance, not a gimmick. Because the product inside the tube is that, so we wanted to make sure our packaging lived and breathed that tonality as well, so it leapt out from the shelf. Um, and we then set about from creating the name and, and the design and of course the packaging, we needed to create sort of a brand idea for it, which is Tattoo Guardian, um, which I'm sure, I'm hoping at this point really makes sense why we did Tattoo Guardian, um, but it is the guardian for all uh, tattoos and every part of, uh, and, and every conceivable tattoo and every conceivable sort of skin, um, uh, you know, no matter the quality of your skin, whether dry skin or the, the uh, forever ink will guard your your tattoos. So it's a tattoo guardian, and um, we then was, uh, we then created this suite of work. Now this was all in late 2012, all around the launch, and very very simple at this stage. It, it's it's all small, but it's you know there was the pack, there's an app, there was a DM sampler that we sent to tattoo artists, key artists around the UK. Um, with the sample pack um, and of course we had a presence on Facebook straight away because as I said earlier social is increasingly it, it's, it's increasingly important to all brands it's particularly important to tattoos because everyone talks about it they talk about tattoos before they even have the tattoo they go online they learn more they discover they, they, they shortlist images um, so, so it's a deeply um, uh, communicative sort of uh, activity and the app there that you could see is uh, a, quite a smart app in as much as it could uh, it used global positioning technology to let uh, you know what the weather was doing where you are and whether you should be using the shield or not. So say you're in Barcelona and you're on holiday and if you're lucky enough to be in Barcelona on holiday it would say look it's 26 and sunny today you should really be putting the shield on. So it would give advice and it could and it could um, advise it um, the person with the tattoo. So you've got, you've bought Forever Ink, you've got the app um, and you're on Facebook and then, as you can see the sampling was going out into market. So um, this was the, uh, I'd like to show a few shots from our event actually, and this was launched at the um, event at late 2012. So from blank tubes within a few months to being at a launch event with some media around it, um, certainly there was a bit of PR activity as well. And you can see here, uh, giving you just a flavor really for the event, um, and you know, obviously people were, uh, the Polaroids were taken on the night and put up um, on a board about tattoos to start conversations. Obviously there was a bit of media there, there were lots of people with lots of tattoos. You can see in the top left, this girl is very, very enthusiastic um, with, with, with um, uh, getting tattoos. And there are some shots there of Lou Malloy in action, and, and um, you could see the product itself. So that was all great, um, but it was really niche. And Forest Labs in the UK, you know, they don't have a lot of money, and they want, but they knew they had a good product. And so they came to us in. Um, uh, well, after that, we you know, obviously continued the conversation, and sort of then they came to us and said, "Well, okay, the brief. We need a brief for 2013, and we need to take it mainstream." Um, but as ever, the language de jour is we have a very limited budget. So we then had to set about taking this very good product um, um, and take it sort of more mainstream. Now, the way that we discuss this is it should be almost a case of if an 18-year-old girl is getting a tattoo that her grandmother might want to buy her forever ink to care for it, or her mother or father or friends, you know, this sort of thing, so that it, it becomes a little bit better known, more widely known. Um, so with that, um, we needed to actually set some sort of a point of view for them, a purpose. Um, we couldn't just rush out and do work, I didn't think. I think we needed to really ground it in a little bit more substance. The product has substance. The tattoo um, industry has a lot of kind of substance. I mean, it's not easy to break into where the artists are. They're very defensive. It's quite a, it can be a relatively closed sort of circle of, of cool people. So um, we really need to make sure that the brand had a point of view and we got off on the right foot there. And so the purpose that, that we created was that everything we do, everything we do about, um, everything we do is about being guardians of tattoos and tattoo culture. And that was critical because it's not just the physical action of Forever Ink and what it can do for you. Forever Ink needs to stand for tattoo culture. Now, 
even in the last six months here in the UK, there have been articles in the press um, that you couldn't get a job with the Met, which is a police force, if you had a tattoo that came up above your collar line. Um, before HMV sort of um, uh, had their rather catastrophic catastrophic business upheaval, the, 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 the music shops, they had a policy that uh, tattoos that were, were, were obvious um, would actually actively work against people getting jobs there. So there's a lot of stuff around it. And we wanted Forever Inc. to be guardians of the culture as well as the physical tattoo. And we sort of explain it like this, that functionally Forever Inc. products will provide the physical protection, no doubt. The guardianship of those tattoos, because tattoos must look their best and they must do their owners proud. But what of the tattoo culture? How are we going to protect that? Well, tattoo culture is about designing and it's about personal stories and, and greater stories. It's history, it's opinions, it's the umming and ahhing, it's the indecision around tattoos. And it's celebrating and socializing. So tattoo culture is, it's you and it's me and it's our friends and it's our family and frankly it's here to stay. It is, it is going to boom for a long, long time to come. So being guardians of tattoo culture means that Forever Inc. will weigh into any public or social debates around the issues of tattoos with plenty of personality and enthusiasm. And we're starting to realize that now. So we've got to be able to react very, very quickly on social media, which we have a dedicated person to do that. Um, but also we need to be able to react quickly with communications work that might respond to this sort of stuff in the press. So at the moment we're doing it to respond in social, but also we would look to consider doing that in, in, in the press. Um, so this was really, really important for them. It then set the tone for the work we did. So as I said, it steered the work and importantly, it steered Forest Labs. So even the conversations that we're now having with our fabulous clients there is, uh, are slightly different because we talk about the tattoo culture as much as the physical um, um, product of, of you know, Forever Inc. and is actually the physical product and the tattoos. We're talking about the broader issues around the culture. So that's quite exciting. And um, as I said, it steered the work and I'd like to now show you the work for 2013 that's now running. Um, what you're about, what I'm about to show you um, formed, um, there's going to be two print ads first off, and it formed the body of the work. Um, it, it informed web banners. I'm not going to show you every single iteration because you can use your imagination, it's perfectly clear. But um, you can see how this could cascade out into several different media. Now, um, as I said, limited budget. So we're in magazines here in London this summer. We are in um, nationwide magazines and they range in everything from Heat, which is frankly a bit gossipy and quite mainstream, to Gay Times, which is obviously less mainstream. Um, and several other publications. Um, it was a very, very complex shoot, and I'll show you. Here's the first, here's the first ad, and it says, looks after all tattoos. And this is for the ink balm. Um, and, um, yeah, and you can read, read the copy there as well. But copy short, short and punchy. We wanted it to be, you know, kind of in the, in the language. Uh, of the business, which is you know punchy, hard hitting, having impact, which is very much what a tattoo does. The interesting thing about the production, and when you look at the work, is that you can see that an alphabet has been formed, but not necessarily out of letters. And this was one of the great challenges for our art director, because he literally had uh, over three days, we had 150 different talent come through the the studio, the photographer's studio. And we'd recruited some of them through Facebook, through our, through our um, community on Facebook. Um, also, the photographer had used a casting agent to recruit more people. So we had a lot of them coming through, and we were really shooting you know, all over their bodies. Um, so it wasn't about shooting whole tattoos. It was about the art director having an eye for shooting parts of tattoos and what could be letters and form letters. So we've got two things going on here. We've got very clear letters in there, but we've, we've also got sort of elegant abstractions of of. Um, those letters to create the alphabet. And when he was putting those together, it was a really mix and match uh, situation because you put some letters next to others and you couldn't read the word. So, but, so, but we needed to make sure that there was a reward in it. It wasn't just a headline that was straight out with all letters. That would have been dull. And people you know, who are involved in tattoos want to be engaged, uh, so, so they're looking for that level of interest. So there's a bit, bit of depth here. So the, those abstractions I'm talking about in this particular ad, you know, you can see the TP that forms the A, you can see the two flowers that form double O, et cetera, et cetera. You can see them there. Um, so this was um, a very, very interesting uh, shoot. Of course, you can imagine with people revealing all, all sorts of themselves 
um, and also it was a very, very time consuming construction. For the, for the shield, um, which is, so there's the balm and the shield, and please bear in mind that these were really brand campaigns, but we had the two products, you know, it was brand for Forever Ink, but we had the two products, so we did make subtle references to each product in the copy. And of course this says, and I hope you can read this, but protects tattoos everywhere. Um, and obviously the word play um, suggesting all over the body and indeed you know, arguably all over the world. But you can see in this one, we allowed a little bit more of the part of the body on which the tattoo appears to be shown. So you can see with the P, the first letter, there's a, there's a crease. You can see the E, um, which is actually in the, the third last letter in the word everywhere. That E is actually a Chinese character, but we've cropped it so that it would just be an E and it's near a, a belly button. So we allowed, and there's another T near an ear, so we allowed that everywhere to come through. So as I said, high level of craft. Um, and these are being really well received in the market at the moment and, and we feel like we are um, talking in the right way to our audience. Um, and I wanted to show you just a little bit on the shoot itself. Um, and you can see that people are coming in and some have more or less tattoos, but interesting tattoos. So the photographer was really, really busy shooting all over bodies. So I think we had 100, and, like I said, about 150 talent come through, two and a half thousand shots. And you can see the bottom right there, how um, it was really on the shoot even a cut and paste to start and get an idea of what the alphabet might be. But then all the proof sheets were brought back to Anthem and in the creative department, they were spread out everywhere and literally the art director got to work. Um, so many, many uh, long nights and a bit of weekend work to make that work. Like all these things, they probably look, they do look simple in the, in the end, and that's the point, they should, but um, uh, quite a lot of work was put into that. Um, on the next slide, I have a cinema ad, and I'd like to explain it to you. We're doing highly targeted cinema. Um, I love the medium of cinema because you have a captive audience, one thing, which is very rare in, um, in the world we live in these days, particularly with the, the, the distractions that we have around us. Um, and also it allows um, um, you know, sampling to be done. So at the cinema we're doing some sampling with sachets and then they also see the communication inside. Now, I will, I'm, I'm going to have to share it with you by sharing my screen. And I just want to see, I'm not a technically gifted person, so just bear with me. If it doesn't, I will explain it to you because it's simple. Um, and I will now just share the screen, so bear with me. Right, okay. As I said, not technically gifted, so it's not going to work. So let me explain it to you. So I'll go to the next slide. Um, this was 10 seconds. And very simply, the pack itself, because we always talk about big ideas from the shelf out at Anthem, and, and this was a very, very literal construction of that. But you can see the pack, and all that happens is it unfolds to the panels of the packaging, and what is revealed is the headline, which is that headline. Looks after all tattoos. Okay, so it's on each panel, each section of the, it opens up and it reads looks after all tattoos and we've exaggerated the packaging's interior to do that. So it's like it's on the inside of the packaging and then it folds back up and finishes in the frame you see in front of you. So it starts with this frame and finishes. Very simple 10 second. Um, what's been quite interesting out of this conversation now is that, as I said, the client's really trying to find some money just to be on television, maybe on one channel in a few programs like LA Inc. or London Inc., these sorts of tattoo programs, just be a little bit, but still trying to go mainstream. The other thing that's happened is it sparked a conversation in here with our client um, as a result of a conversation that I had with Law Gold, our, our chief creative officer globally. And it was, we're now looking at maybe trying to get Forever Inc. to print inside the packaging messages made of those tattoos. So like the previous headlines, here. So we could actually print that message on the panels inside the pack. So when you actually buy it, you open it up, you pull out the tube and you'd be, you know, it'd be quite a, a sense of delight to discover um, the message on the inside. So that's an ongoing conversation. It's highly confidential. Don't tell anyone. Uh, but it could be a really nice way of actually extending the experience um, and seeing we're all mature. I thought I'd share it with you. Um, and the next um, uh, critical points, as I've mentioned uh, time and again, is that we need to be, uh, we are on Facebook, we need to be constantly um, interacting on Facebook. We are, we have that community, it's a very 
strong community. We don't oversteer it. Um, obviously, you want to be more um, um, sort of, I guess, a facilitator to the conversations rather than someone who's kind of coming in with super, super brand uh, <laughs> brand weight um, because it, you know they'll, they'll smell it a mile off. Uh, we need to be authentic. So that's what Facebook is about. You can see the messages on there. Adapts very well to web banners. Um, and you know the whole social area is of course very strong. I mean, look at look at the activity on Pinterest, which is really nice. Even someone's uploaded a Jean Cocteau illustration, but it's all tattoos for in, uh, and inspiration for tattoos. So you can see it's a really really rich area for Forever Ink to <clears throat> participate in. Now I know we said 20 minutes. I think I'm one minute over. So I've got one more slide to show you, really, or well, two more. But one: Are we winning skin? I said hearts, minds, and skin. We know. We, are, we know that it's working um, uh, from an emotional point of view. We know that the brand's getting that affinity. Heads-wise, we're, you know, we're kicking down barriers into the tattoo studio so that they are actually in the tattoo. Artists are saying the right things and are actually actively um, uh, recommending Forever Inc. Because but Panthem just isn't very cool anyway and Forever Inc. is better. Um, but our friends at Forest Labs are a little bit cagey when it comes to releasing numbers. They are very, very cagey about their sales numbers, unfortunately. So I couldn't um, bring those today. But I, I have brought some numbers with you, uh, with me, and for you, and they are um, in the web. On the web, we've had 142% increase in traffic to the Tattoo Guardian website, and this is driven by, of course, organic SEO and social media, and now also the advertising as well. Um, in Facebook, the users um, have created over 5,000 stories, which is great. As we said, people love to share their stories, and they are doing it. Um, and it's been shared with 250,000 people, so it's starting to get a real footprint around the nation. Um, and 6.6 .6 million users have engaged with Forever Inc. content on Facebook, generating 23.7 million impressive, uh, pardon me, impressions, and they are impressive impressions, at that sort of number. Now, bear in mind, of course, there's always a funnel with Facebook. You get a lot of people who go on and read and look at things, but the funnel of actually participation, and this is the same for really any brand, starts to diminish and, and really only a very small percentage really actively is on there all the time and, and engaging. That's the truth of it. But So that's why we're quite uh, proud of these figures. Um, so that was my, that's 20 minutes. I've taken an extra two minutes of your time, so I, I, I do apologize. I hope I was worth it. Um, but you know, thank you from London. Thank you for tuning into Brand Square at Anthem, um, because it's been great to be able to share this with you. Um, and you know, please feel free to fire off some questions. I'd love to love to hear from you. Wish I could see you, but I'd love to hear from you. Okay, I've just got a question that's come in that says, I see that this is the finished work, but did you propose a greater scope in other media? Which is a good question. Um, what we did do, yes, uh, when the brief came in to take it mainstream, as I said earlier, at Anthem we do big ideas from the shelf out, and that means interrogating and understanding the packaging, whether we've done it or not, and then we look to radiate it out into the world and amplify it. So um, behind the social media strategy was actually a very active um, um, scope of work that was, I'd say, activation oriented. So, for example, at Glastonbury this weekend, which is a big music festival here, what we proposed was to have booths at Glastonbury, for example, where I could walk in and they just normal photo booths, you know, that you've seen everywhere in shopping malls. You walk into it, it's a forever in photo booth, and you take a photograph of your tattoo. And then that was going to be uploaded. And it would be, um, uh, if you like, body sensitive. It would be able to map your body and see which part of your body it's on. So if it was on my um, uh, on my bicep here, my arm, um, it would be able to map that. So my tattoo would be uploaded to a body of tattoos. And we were going to create these great bodies of tattoos. So even people with facial tattoos, tattoos on their hands, be brilliant. And we'd create these really big bodies, and which would we would then upload online, um, so that people could actually see their tattoo and where it sits in. With the rest of the world so places like rock festivals and of course even in the right retail locations could have been cool to do that um, that is still in the pipeline of something we might do what i'm really excited about is that once you start to get a body of tattoos from a whole lot of people um, you can you can create them virtually 
But then I love it when digital communications and non-digital communications just effortlessly weave together. So, to, so, so what we've also proposed to that is maybe we could then sculpture out of bronze or a similar material, full bodies, but entirely made of the imprint of the tattoos. So if you could imagine, it would be all the tattoo patterns forming bodies. So it could be everyone from Glastonbury there's the virtual kind of body that's made, if you like, having the photo photographs of their tattoos taken. And then there's a real one that's a sculpture that becomes the Glastonbury 2013, you know, body of tattoos. And, and it could be, you know, either presented to the festival or it could be, they could be on location. They could, you know, they become quite artful pieces of communication. So there was a lot greater depth to all this. Um, as we said, invariably there are limited budgets so sacrifices had to be made but a lot of this other stuff is in the pipeline for the future and obviously I'm quite excited about that. Another good question please if you've got time. Okay ah yes good how do we recruit the there's a question coming in how do you recruit the talent for the photography? Um, that was good because we had quite a good following on Facebook um, and uh, the other social channels. So we were able to recruit through there. So that was great. So yet again, engaging with, our, with Forever Inc's customers, but also of course, working with a photographer, they have casting agents. So casting agents um, have people, of course, who they know have tattoos, you know, on their books, but also they did street casting. And we're quite fortunate because our uh, anthem here, our office, our agency is in Shoreditch. Um, and the area around here is, you know, East London is, is really, really great culturally at the moment. So we're able to street cast in, in sort of a few square, square kilometers around here and actually get a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting subject, as you can see from the work. I hope that answers that. If there's any other questions, happy to, I think we've still got a few minutes. Okay, great. Uh, this is a question that's coming in. How can I get better work for the budgets that I already have? Meaning, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? The budgets don't get any bigger. Often, you're looking to to really get more value. Um, this is this is a it's, it's a good question because it's a tough one. Um, I think that it's it's for me. I mean, I'm the creative director. I, I have relationships with other creative people who work with me. So they might be photographers, directors, illustrators, retouchers. One of the best things that you can do uh, to, to get value is to do great work, is to do work that other people want to be involved in. If it's a job that pays the bills, that's fine. If it's a job that maybe doesn't pay the bills so well, but will give someone greater credentials, will give them something that they can put in their folio, um, that's always better. That's always better. Um, so I, I would be an advocate of doing really, really interesting creative work uh, pushing the boat out and you'll always get great people for less money. I once did an Adidas campaign, uh, print campaign, shooting with um, some American athletes, Tyson Gay, um, Jeremy Warriner, and a few other international athletes. And I shot it for the Beijing 2008 Olympics in a past life. Interestingly, the photographer, I got one of the best photographers in the world, but his day rate uh, was a hundred thousand pounds a day. And when he saw the work, um, we and and we told him what the work was going to be and how visible it was going to be in the Asia Pacific region. Um, next thing, his rate dropped to nearly half. So you know, the, the, it's really really important if you can do um, interesting work to the people who be working with you. It's easier for us, the creatives, to go to them and say, "Come on, you know, do your best deal because this is great." Therefore, you get a better photographer or director or illustrator for the same amount of money that you already have. Okay, I reckon I now have about 30 seconds or a minute. <laughs> so if there's any other questions, love to hear them. Okay, thank you for, for the texts and notes coming through. We are out of time. Um, thanks very much for joining. I really know time is precious um, and I really appreciate you um, uh, coming online and listening. Happy to talk more. Um, you know, we've got those points of contact you've got at Anthem and Shock. Happy to talk more whenever you'd like to. Um, and thanks again. Okay.